So we're in Topaz Gigapixel um, version 8, and I've got this image here, you can see it's a um, it's a photographic image, but it's actually an AI-generated image, so it's not strictly a photograph. Now, the original size of this is 768 by 512 pixels, so pretty small, although it is quite a good quality um, generation for that small size. So what we're first going to do is go to the top right side here and go to our upscale factor, and we're just going to choose the amount of upscaling we'd actually like. I have it set to nothing at the moment, just to give you a default. So I'm going to go for four is a good all-round kind of upscale size as far as i'm concerned i like to use it for sort of general purpose images especially ai images that start out around this sort of similar sort of pixel dimension anyway if you're starting out with larger photography files then obviously you may not want to go this this big or you may want to go um bigger if you're doing a huge print but um i generally tend to stay around um four times you know for most of my most of my work then I'm just going to have a quick click and scan around here and look at the image. And um, in this main preview window, if you click and hold down, every time you click and hold down your left mouse button, it will um, show you the before of the processing and let go and it shows you the after. Or you can go down to these preview options down here where you can do a slider or a left and right before and after. Um, and there we go. So at the moment, there's no settings, nothing's applied, everything's at default pretty much, and it's just um, showing you what it looks like upscaled. So a nice clean result already without anything else. So now we're going to go to the models, and this is where we need to choose which um, upscaling model is actually going to work best for us. Now it's easy to it's easy to just get bogged down in what your favorite one is or what you think your favorite one is, but it does vary from generation to generation. So I like to use this AB compare tool where we click here and I'd say for this one, for something like this, it's gonna be between standard um, and high fidelity, I imagine. Even though technically it's low res, the low res model is more for images that have like uh, worse quality and quite a bit of artifacts and JPEG compression and things like that. So for this type of good quality starting point, I would um, say it was a it was a shootout between standard and high fidelity. So now I've clicked the A B test. I've got on the left hand side I've got the standard V two model, and on the right hand side I've got the high fidelity model. Now this is a hundred percent size, um, but you can zoom in with the magnification sort of slider down here. But bear in mind this isn't affecting our upscaling size. It's just letting us to look a little bit closer. Now all I'm doing when I look between these two particular models is look for how they handle the fine detail like the hair and any sort of poor texture that is already there, skin texture that you might want to preserve. Um, and in some cases one is better than the other. It's not the, it's not the case that one is always superior to the other even in similar types of images. It really does depend. Like on the standard V2 preview on the left hand side here, I don't know if you can see because of the YouTube compression may already um, ruin this, but there's some more, there's some sharper, finer detail on the skin, like on the cheek, than on this high fidelity version or model on the right hand side. Now that might be a little bit too sharp for you. You might prefer the slightly more natural look of the um, right hand side image. So I'm just going to pan around and just look at the other texture, and it is very close between these two. Um, I think I'm actually going to go with the, with the high fidelity V2, which is the one on the right hand side, um, because I think any slight sharpening that the other one has, I could add overall um, in here or in a photo editor anyway. So I'm just going to click apply model and that button down there. And all that's going to do is just update the preview to that model. Now I'm going to put this back to 100% magnification. So we're seeing things at sort of actual size. And now we've chosen the model, we can go down and see the other options that are available. So generative models here, this section I'm skipping over because it's not relevant. And then model settings, these will vary depending on which uh, model we chose. But in this one, we've got a sharpen, a denoise and fixed compression. So with the sharpening, you've got to be a little bit careful here because um, the images, especially if you generate them with the AI, they normally are pretty sharp anyway, and you can easily over sharpen images by doing this. So what you want to do is look at the area of the image that is already the sharpest. So um, the area that's maybe in the most focus and is the most clear. So here I would say there's a lot in focus, but maybe like, um, like the cat's whiskers, um, the 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 key points of the lady here, like her eyes and some of her hair and things like that and, and a coat. And just think, do I want anything more sharp than that? Because 
if you've got other areas that you want to selectively sharpen, that's going to be a job for a, a different piece of software. So in here, we're talking about overall sharpening. So if I drag this up really high just to show you what not to do, um, you'll get an, a sharpening level applied over the whole image that's, that's too aggressive for this, and it's starting to make some of the small details look a bit crunchy. Now, it is a lot more subtle than some of the sharpening you can do in Photo AI, for example, but still... A little goes a long way and we don't want to over sharpen the image same for denoise this image does not look like it has any um, unwanted noise or grain in it anyway certainly nothing that doesn't look natural so i wouldn't touch that at all same with the compression i'm not seeing any obvious compression artifacts when i click and hold down for the before before um, preview um, so I'm not going to push that because if you push the sliders and um, when the problems don't actually exist in the image you're going to actually um, it's going to be at the detriment of the image quality and you could actually make things look worse so go down face recovery is not needed because um, this image has got very close up face and it's very clear you would use that for instances where you've got smaller faces in the background and maybe some of the features look a little bit distorted which is common with AI generations um, but in this case, it's absolutely fine. And gamma correction, we're not going to touch either. So basically, that is our um, that is our perfectly upscaled image using Topaz Gigapixel.